Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about a crisis that rarely gets the attention it deserves, yet it affects the daily survival of millions of people. More than 15 million Iranians are facing severe water shortages, and for many of them, clean and reliable water has become a luxury rather than a basic human right. Water scarcity in Iran is not a sudden disaster. It is the result of decades of decisions, policies, and environmental pressures that slowly push the country toward a breaking point. Iran is naturally a dry and semi-arid country, but nature alone does not explain why so many people now live without regular access to water. Iran's geography plays a major role in this crisis. Much of the country receives very little rainfall each year, and large areas depend on seasonal rivers and underground aquifers. For centuries, Iranians managed water carefully using traditional systems like canats, which transported groundwater over long distances without modern pumps. These ancient systems were sustainable and well suited to the climate. They worked with nature instead of trying to overpower it. However, in recent decades, Iran moved away from these traditional methods and toward large, scale modern infrastructure projects. One of the biggest changes was the rapid construction of dams. Iran now has hundreds of dams built across its rivers. These dams were meant to control floods, generate electricity, and support agriculture, but they also disrupted natural water flows and ecosystems. Many rivers that once fed lakes, wetlands, and farming communities have been diverted or blocked. As a result, downstream areas began to dry up. Wetlands disappeared, lakes shrank, and groundwater stopped being naturally replenished. At the same time, groundwater extraction increased dramatically. Farmers, industries, and cities drilled millions of deep wells to access underground water. In many places, water was pumped out much faster than nature could replace it. This overextraction caused groundwater levels to collapse. In some regions, the land itself began to sink, a phenomenon known as land subsidence. Once this happens, aquifers are permanently damaged and cannot store water again. Agriculture is another major factor behind the crisis. Iran's agricultural policies have long prioritized self, sufficiency in food production, even in areas that lack sufficient water. Crops like wheat, rice, and sugarcane require enormous amounts of water. In dry provinces, farmers were encouraged or even pressured to grow water, intensive crops. To support this, massive irrigation projects were launched, often without considering long term water availability. Traditional farming methods were replaced with inefficient flood irrigation systems. Huge amounts of water were lost to evaporation and leakage, especially under Iran's intense heat. Urban growth also played a significant role. Iran's population grew rapidly over the last few decades, and cities expanded faster than water infrastructure could handle. Megas Cities like Tehran depend heavily on water, transferred from distant regions. These water transfer projects often take water away from poorer or rural areas and send it to major cities. This creates deep inequalities, where some regions enjoy relatively stable water supplies, while others are left dry. Climate change has made everything worse. Rising temperatures have increased evaporation rates, meaning reservoirs and lakes lose water faster than before. Rainfall patterns have also become more unpredictable. Droughts are now more frequent and more intense. When rain does come, it often falls in short, heavy bursts that cause flooding rather than replenishing groundwater. One of the most visible symbols of Iran's water crisis is Lake Ermia. Once one of the largest saltwater lakes in the Middle East, it has lost most of its water. Dams, water diversion, and drought turned it into a vast salt desert. The drying of Lake Ermia devastated local communities. Farmers lost their livelihoods, salt storms damaged crops and homes, and health problems increased due to air pollution from exposed lakebed salts. Similar stories can be found across the country. 
rivers like the Zayande Rudd, which once flowed through the historic city of Isfahan, now run dry for much of the year. Bridges stand over empty riverbeds. For ordinary people, the impact is immediate and painful. In many towns, water is rationed for hours or even days. Families store water in tanks, worrying constantly about shortages. In some areas, tap water is so polluted that it cannot be safely consumed. People are forced to buy bottled water, adding financial stress to already struggling households. Protests have erupted in several provinces over water shortages. Farmers, workers, and residents have taken to the streets demanding access to water. These protests are often met with heavy security responses. Water scarcity has also increased internal migration. People leave rural areas and small towns where water has disappeared moving to larger cities in search of work and basic services. This migration puts even more pressure on urban water systems, creating a vicious cycle. Cities grow, demand increases, and water sources are stretched even thinner. The crisis is not just about water quantity, but also about water management. Corruption, mismanagement, and lack of transparency have undermined effective solutions Large projects are often prioritized because they are visible and politically attractive. Even when smaller, community-based solutions might be more sustainable. Experts inside and outside Iran have warned for years that the country is approaching a point of no return. Some regions may become uninhabitable if current trends continue. Despite this, meaningful reform has been slow. Powerful interests benefit from existing policies, and changing course would require difficult political and economic decisions. Iran's water crisis also has regional implications. Shared rivers and aquifers connect Iran with neighboring countries. Overuse on one side can create tensions across borders. Looking forward, the solutions are complex but not impossible improving irrigation efficiency, changing crop patterns, restoring wetlands, and reducing groundwater extraction could make a real difference. Reviving traditional water management practices alongside modern technology could help balance human needs with environmental limits. Public awareness is also critical. Water conservation at the household level cannot solve the crisis alone, but it is part of a broader cultural shift toward valuing water as a precious resource. Ultimately, the story of why 15 million Iranians have no water is a warning. It shows what happens when short-term gains are prioritized over long-term sustainability. This crisis is not unique to Iran. Many countries in arid and semi-arid regions face similar challenges. Iran's experience offers lessons that the world cannot afford to ignore. Water is life, and without it, societies unravel. The choices made today will determine whether future generations inherit a livable land or a dry and fractured one. Understanding this crisis is the first step toward change. Ignoring it only guarantees that the number of people without water will continue to grow. As the situation stands, millions of Iranians wake up every day unsure if water will flow from their taps. This uncertainty shapes their lives, their health, and their future. The question is no longer whether Iran has a water crisis. The question is whether there is still time to fix it before the damage becomes irreversible.